Apparently 988 is absolutely terrifying in that it like just sends police to your house. Like the, Oh, the number the, just 988? The new, sorry, it's the new like national suicide hotline and people have been posting about it like on social media and like, oh, isn't this great? And like, oh my God, like this great hot, like it's federally funded. And all what the thing. fuck? But what it, but what, in, which it sounds great. Yes. No, like, it doesn't, it already but, doesn't sound but then, great. But then like in, in reality, it's like, they're taking your information. In some cases, they're sending a police officer to your house. Yeah. To drag you off to a psych ward. It's yeah. Like sending the cops to deal with a mental health situation never ends well, especially for people of color. And it's so absurd. Well, it's. I feel like, weren't they already doing that with, with 911? Or if you were calling, it, like there was some sort of... Um, there's like that sort of, I mean, your doctor or psychiatrist would tell you as much if there was yeah. some issue, like they would have to report it. They'd have to call the police. No, you're right. You're right. So I mean, it's just, in that it, sense, but like, it is, it is unfortunate that it gets, because then, yeah, yeah. the next step is usually getting carted off, which is like a, not good as a very terrifying experience or yeah. can be uh, from my yeah, understanding. Well, I mean, yeah, the kind of places where you're not, where you're signed in against yeah, Anyway. All I'm yeah. saying is underfunded like, to, uh, yeah. to to sum it into one word. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, all I'm saying is like it just not to get on like a high horse about it. It's just I. It seems like there's no like Apple extended to help that right. doesn't have like some rotten core in it. Like, yeah. You know, and it's just I'm so fucking tired and I hate it here. And that's where we're starting. I'm sorry. Well, no. Uh, it's convenient actually because the good news is yes we're gonna get out of america yeah for this episode for this episode yeah you're right oh wait hey victoria hey chelsea you know what i could use right now tell me a breath of fresh movie Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this differently. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh movie. This is a weekly podcast where your hosts, me, Victoria Harley. And me, Chelsea Pope. Each week we watch a movie neither one of us has ever seen. And then we talk about it. I, was, You know, for the longest time, I kept thinking like, is it annoying for us to say our names? But then I was like, no, no they got to know who our voices are. Yeah. Like, duh. Well, also, um, <laughs> we do kind of sound similar sometimes. So, so I feel yeah, like. Yeah, that happens. Um, I was also going to say <clears throat> that a lot of that is just me more or less stealing how the dollop opens every episode you know oh. in that they some people have a philosophy in podcasting that like you should always with at the very beginning yeah. or, or within the first minute you need to introduce the show and what it is and explain what it is oh absolutely and i just find that that's like an easy way to start and then we're done then like we can do whatever we want and yeah not every podcast does this but i i'm i'm with them i'm like i think well that's i feel smart. like that makes sense like i'm yeah, emulating you great. introduce the episode yeah. or yeah whatever I, right? all i'm saying is they're very good and i'm trying to emulate this isn't an audio very book. good yeah. yeah exactly right um this week's episode just to keep on track yeah oh yeah this week's episode is the 1995 romantic drama before sunrise <laughs> yeah <I don't> know. <laughs> Directed by Richard Linklater, who we'll talk about Linklater. Linklater. <laughs> exactly. More yeah. like link later to our socials and all that. Pump it up, baby. We're going to link. Yeah. Um, so this is a movie about an American named Jesse who on his way to Vienna meets Celine, a student returning to Paris. After long conversations, a surprising connection between them, Jesse convinces Celine to get off the train with him in Vienna. They wander the city together, and as the night progresses, their bond makes separating in the morning a difficult choice. And that's our movie. There you go. Um, it's very talky. It's a- yeah, it's like talk, like cool place talk. A cool place talk. Cool place talk. Cool place talk. Yeah. I, I do think just um, how... The city did so much for oh yeah like beautiful you didn't need production design because yeah here's vienna <laughs> you this know? is one of those movies is that like the whole annoying like oh is the city one of the character like new york city would argue is one of the characters of this movie right. no but like you really 
could you make could. that argument you i think to a argument. degree i think because we're left with those empty spaces then Afterward, i'm kind of jumping uh, yeah. i'm jumping ahead here no, no, but no, no. We'll i feel there. like that sort of solidified the significance of of yeah, yeah. Um, their presence in those spaces in those spaces and in a sense how just sort of in sync they are with things Mm -hmm. things fall together in such like a um, if you're a cynic like me (laughs) convenient (laughs) way at times sure Um, but then but it all sort of flowed together you know no I get you yeah Um, yeah since we're we're talking about first impressions um, what the hell did I think about this? I mean, off the top, I mean, I definitely, I think we talked about it briefly, but it lived up to the hype. Definitely, yeah. You know, yeah. not that there's so much, but currently there is a bit. And is that just because they're all available on Criterion right now? Is that the is that what, or is, is there some or other? What, thing what do you mean, going? bit in terms of like discourse? Or? I just feel like lately I've been seeing a lot about it, like or there have been a lot of pieces recently. But maybe interesting. I'm, maybe that's just maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's you know. Not I feel like there was true. there's got to have been some, and also the black phone came out and he's he's in that oh Ethan that's, Hawk. that's right and maya hawk his daughter is right. um mm. stranger things that's, so i think there's okay. some of that's always floating in the site um didn't they i feel like the most recent because this is now part of the, the first we're going to be talking about the first of a trilogy yeah that's worth mentioning so before sunrise is part of a three film series a trilogy and and it and it does sort of fall forward in the same way this first movie falls forward it just is kind of like oh it wasn't planned for there to be a trilogy but then you know it's almost kind of like we're getting off on the next chain here and then yeah. we got, in a sense it's kind of like oh the story keeps kind of even though these are movies it feels like the stories like the sort of existential like things coming yeah i don't know it was written, continuation yeah like it was written without the expectation that there would be a sequel but with the common understanding among all the players and uh, collaborators in this that those two of course are going to make their their date you know in six months you know there was right. kind of like a certainty among everyone but i i think i liked that the film let you wonder and whether you're a cynic or a romantic you could debate whether what happened you know what i mean that's it, true it offered you as a standalone yeah piece. if we just are looking at it by yeah. itself as it initially was intended which and you also in theory still could because there mm-hmm. what's great is that it's flexible in both directions that mm-hmm. way this really is just like a moment in time captured between yeah. two people and yeah i mean i um I, I don't, you know, I I don't hate a, a movie that is a lot of conversation. Yeah. Um. I wonder. I just wonder. Like, did did people? Ha- did anyone have the reaction of just like it's nothing happens? You know, like the I, way- I bet. There, I mean, you know, if you're not into this sort of stuff, or like you also don't, you know, like if you're not into this sort of thing, you're not gonna. I mean, obviously, we're not into- catering to that. Um. Yeah. We're no. And uh, I will say, I do get bored very easily with mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. I can get a little bit. Um, I get anxious very easily. I have a poor attention span in general. So, um, most of us do at this point. Yeah. And I, I honestly felt very like in, I, w- I was pretty attuned to yeah. this film overall. I'm not going to lie and say that it gripped me every second, no. but I did find every conversation like, like they're just sort of ongoing conversation they had as they're, they're walking through the city very intriguing and i thought that the elements of the city that they interacted with the people they came across Mm. i found all of those moments carried significance and would fall like it would fall forward into this reaction to that stimulus like they they had things they had people continually coming up to them or in or they were coming across in certain places Mm -hmm. um well like the bartender with the bottle of wine yeah the 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 poet the palm reader oh i love that poem um and i love that palm reader yeah there's and there's those other those other like bros german actors yeah uh, sorry the viennese actors right um who by the way apparently in real life really were two actors in a play about about a cow or something so that was like people they just found um which is which i think is great i like it, it really does sort of lend itself to that argument of like if not the city, maybe, yeah, we can be hard fact and be like, oh, that's the setting. Then certainly the life in the city is uh, an on- an ensemble, if you will, that you... Yeah, and I know this is a film, but yeah. I had a question, which is just, is everyone in Vienna just like a an artist of some kind? Because It I- very much romanticizes, you know, that's that's where I, where I kind of am a little cheeky about sort of, oh, how convenient. Well, they yeah. ran into a poet by the river. Right. Oh, how and, convenient. A and, palm reader is going to... Uh... And I mean, that's, you know, Jesse, who's yeah. played by Ethan Hawke. 
I mean, he's the cynic of the pair of them. Like, right. He's much more, I mean, in fact, he's willing to interrogate that after the fact. But I think there's something about the way he does it that feels like very boyish. Yes. And very like, I need to let you know that I'm smart. And she calls him out on it too. She like, does. You, you centered yourself in that. Like, oh, I didn't get attention for, uh-huh. because of, for a few moments when I was, I was with the palm reader. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I, she, she definitely unpacks yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So when I was really little, I saw White Fang and loved that movie. Yeah. And I think I must have had a crush on Ethan Hawke because he was so pretty. You know, how could yeah, I Yeah. Like, I got, the, I got the appeal watching this. I yeah. never, I never understood it. I think because, like, just never engaged with He's a lot of people. Very young in this. I mean, he's he is young and lean and just has like a look. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie. Upon sight, I, I hated him upon first sight. Mm. Like I was like this. I, and he 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 kind of like uh, oozes that sort of like uh, I just came out of I just got my bachelor's. Like he literally is like I'm just post graduate like find like he's having one of those mm-hmm. like trips yeah we don't find out till later of course that it's like oh right like his yeah. relationship just fell apart mm-hmm. you know he came all the way across the ocean to see we, his girlfriend he finally get some more like vulnerability yeah, that we, comes out we come to understand that yeah. but at first i'm like this is just some privileged white american guy i guess that's the lesson around. for us is that we shouldn't judge we we're <laughs> the cynics being cynical about this i know this, this poor well, broken and it's not as if she's you know Man. perfection but she has these like almost fairy tale like good looks like she oh right she's got this tangled hair that's like perfect and and she's also really fucking smart and she doesn't let him yeah. own like anytime i because here is what i got a reaction about i was like okay wait am i supposed to dislike him is ethan hawk playing a dislikable like he's consciously trying to get this reaction yeah. from us or was he cast because he embodies that? Like I, I was having this kind of constant wrestling going on about like because it makes it it makes it like good casting. It then, does really. Because, but then and there would be these moments where he would say something that I'm like I don't like that. And the next scene, she's like I didn't like that. Yeah, I, I, I really it really worked for me that that whole dynamic and. You know, I have to, I, I couldn't help again. I'm really like just, just an absolute cynic and I, and I fight it and I fight it. Um, but just even from the beginning with the train, I think about, we were talking about just how, you know, um, you know, magnetic Julie Delpy is in this, in this uh, film. And I have to think like, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's good that, that he was there and not some gross, like realistically speaking, probably some like gross dude. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> probably some gross dude would be like. No, I mean, and she does say something later about how like, well, maybe she sat down beside you on purpose. Like, yeah, you know, no, like, to- you, you well, were a good looking guy. Well, she definitely like, did that, especially after the arguing couple were having their whole, oh my God. their whole and I, I really loved how often we were thrown into scenes where people are speaking German and we're not given subtitles because yeah. they want us to feel like, unless you happen to speak some German, you know, um, you feel a bit unmoored the yeah. way they might because they also don't speak much German. And I really liked that. Like, yeah. I like that. It's like, what are they saying? Oh, we're not supposed to know. Like, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was cool. It makes you kind of hyper focus on. Oh, yeah. You're really like in their perspective. And that's what people say about this movie. You know, that's what we're saying about this movie. Like the, the way the camera stays with them. It feels like a fly on the wall kind of documentary. Like we're with them yeah. in such long shots and such long takes that like you really feel like you are there. Yeah. You know, like you're you're experiencing a lot. And everything i've you know i mean this stood out to me for sure and i'm sure it stood out to you and i think it stood out to every critic ever the scene in the booth listening Mm -hmm. to the record like that might be one of the best things ever put on film such an incredible non-verbal acting i know ign ranked it in something related to like love stories or wrong i love all their their stupid (laughs) ranking youtube their movie lists i love those um, but they like th- brought that scene up and it was definitely one of those, th- those, uh, I remember that just dis- distinctly is like, oh, that makes me want to like, yeah, see that. check this out because it, I was, and I, I went into it being like, oh man, I don't know if I can handle just like a bunch of talking for a long yeah. time. And like young mm-hmm. lovers. Ugh. You, know? you know, and I like Richard, Richard Linklater, you know, I, I enjoyed waking life. Um, I mean, if you're st- stoned, he's your best friend, you know, yeah. like if you're, if you're stoned and you, and you like the, like talking about life and existence, then you can put on almost anything he's made and you can, you can kind of sink vibe. your teeth into yeah. it. You'll vibe, you know? 
Um, boyhood, I really enjoyed. I, I wouldn't rewatch boyhood. it though. Yeah. Like, I think it's too much. It's for me. Like, it's there's a lot of parallels too with a lot of it, which I'm sure like so many people can relate to that suburban lifestyle and having the broken family or whatever. Like, and just no, the the the, the, in, the inconsistent finances of them. I think some of that stuff's too personal for me. I hear you. Sorry, I'm talking a little too much. No, no, movie. no, not at all, not at all. Uh, that's what we're here to do is to talk. But this movie felt very like. Well, I mean, Link, just to capitalize on oh, that, yeah. like, Linklater is, like, obsessed with relationships and suburban living. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this is, like, this is so funny, because before this movie, he did uh, Slacker, and right. then Dazed and Confused, and then this. And, I mean, some people really love Slacker. I can't, I can't do it. I, um, I couldn't finish it, it either, it yeah. Just, it's, um, yeah, I, it gets a little tedious. Well, and some of his earliest experimental films were, like, narrative lists about traveling from point a to point b kind of stuff and don't get me wrong that stuff can't if you if you vibe with it more oh, yeah. power to you all i'm saying that and is i love like, days and confused i really don't like days and confused <laughs> at all and this movie feels so mature next to that it, oh sure like, yeah this movie fe- is no like, I, I have to say this would rank higher this than is her level i mean it's so personal and it's so uh, much just about a camera and performances it's like almost filmed theater yeah. you know it's gorgeous and it's so sophisticated but it's refreshing it, yeah it's like i don't know when you take link later out of texas something happened yeah you know? like he it and the interesting thing is that although this you know the city obviously plays a big part i did read that he knew he wanted it to be set overseas or in a foreign place he wanted them to be traveling because people are generally mm-hmm. more open to experiences when you're traveling that you might not be open to normally and you know the whole choice of vienna was purely because the subsidies were the best there <laughs> like so it wasn't like the most romantic choice you know no but it, it, it's maybe just that projection then literal and metaphorical lens that we're seeing yeah them through and that yeah. they're seeing each other through and maybe it yeah. wouldn't because i i think about that too i'm like well, you like know a- i was critical about her being on the train and like it, you know thankfully it's it's you know ethan hawk <laughs> and not like probably some gross ass dude or like other <laughs> i'm being i'm being so cynical no, and I but know. also too like the, them going through the city and having the experiences they had you know mm-hmm. like what are the odds and like the sad reality is i don't know especially traveling alone as a woman i couldn't help but think about just like some what of the risk un- this was. just yeah. some of the i don't know i feel like i'm just mostly revealing about like revealing that my vibration is cynical ergo yeah my fear going out traveling would be that it would be all of the shittier case scenario i want to say worst case scenario but yeah. like you know no. not not having all the fun i understand i'm like, such a debbie downer well this I movie mean, made me not want to be a debbie downer no no and that's good i, I was think, happy for that i think that's what the it has that effect not just on the, its viewers but you know ethan hawks had something to the effect of like oh i was so much more thrilled about cinema and art mm-hmm. and i worked on a book and i wouldn't have done that otherwise it was very energizing it feels pure i think that's what it that's, is that's yeah that's a really good word for this and i would also say yeah pure and potentially very optimistic or just like accepting like there was just mm-hmm. a very sort of and their anonymity relaxed energy with each other we're on the exact yeah. same footing like we're learning as much about like we learn at the same time as the characters yeah. learn and there's something really um it, it feels like spontaneous it feels alive mm-hmm. um and i like that i'm not that there's moments of tension and i mean we mentioned the the listing in the booth that's not the only place but even like you know right after she's agreed to get off the train at some point they're on a bus together and he's kind of immediately got his arm not around her but like over the seat behind her and i was like very distracted by like there was tension. you can see there he really like the space richard bet- or link later yeah uh he, he he yeah enjoyed like having us get to watch them get closer and closer yeah. and just like they're and they're holding hands going down the street yeah the space between yeah. their bodies there's this electricity that's just jumping and that sounds so cheesy I hate when people talk about because it's not even about the romantic chemistry or whatever. I mean, it's like two performers who yeah. are completely present and um, who believe in like what they're Do saying. Do you think they were really into each other? I don't know. Um, I mean, there's a part of me that did hope, she ever love him? <laughs> I hope I hope they didn't. I like there's a part of me that wants yeah. to believe that they were so professional and cared so much about the craft that like that would 
only get in the way. Oh, sure. You know, and that it yeah. was like they were beyond that. But I also know that it's very normal for people. Who oh, play. sure. Uh, it, I'm sure it's got to come from a real place. I just have to ask this a lot. I, it's like I. You know, when when, I mean, when of, Christine parts ways with the Phantom at the end of Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> I remember asking my mom, like, did she ever love him? And I got really upset because she like was like, I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> I was like, no. I, or she and like, and I, and I don't know. And then, but it makes me think about that. I like just think that question once in a while in terms of when I see, when you see especially good chemistry mm-hmm. between performers. Yeah. It's important to note that although this film was they're just very good actors oh yeah they're excellent um this film was written by link later but he also had a writing partner named kim krizan she was in slackers and days and confused as well i don't know the roles but um because he he knew he wanted to write this story based on an experience he had where he spent a night walking around with a woman he had met and just they had a really intense conversation and they were up till dawn and he knew then that he wanted to capture that that feeling and that night they wrote a screenplay together, but then once they cast Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, um, they more or less came in and kind of rewrote it. And that's not to say that like they came in like, oh, this is terrible. No, they were invited to rewrite it. But, and, and really for, so much for the better, too. Oh, yeah. No, they injected a lot of romance into it. There, yeah. it, it was very talky, heady, not... It, it lacked a lot of romance it, it, without and they, I don't they know were able to, to make it. it their own too where where they could really uh, embrace the roles yeah. and make them feel so natural yeah. because it literally is coming from yeah from and them. that's yeah. part of why they were attracted to it also as a project because they weren't just yeah. wanted as actors they were wanted as collaborators now they don't receive credit in this however in the following two films they do receive co-writing credit mm. so you know I think it was the first movie. Well, not, I mean, no one thought of it as the first movie. They were just trying to get a movie made. So right. they, they weren't about to fight for these like extra credits. They felt like, just forget it. Valid. Like, but then, and then when it becomes an awards, then darling, we'll, yeah. and then suddenly, and now like, we're talking sequels. I think that's, I think that's valid. I mean, that's oh, an yeah. understandable trajectory. Absolutely. But it's worth noting. Um, and it's not a secret, you know, everybody's pretty open about that. Yeah. Um, so it seems, it seems like, yeah, it's like, it, it's, it's humility and, ex- mm-hmm. and like, uh, like good collaboration on, that's what I mean. uh, you like, know, people is who... it link later or link, let link ladder, link Ooh, ladder, ladder. I don't ladder, know. Like ladder. Shit. I don't. <sighs> okay. Well, someone engage with us. I know. <laughs> and tell anyone, us the anyone. answer. Like just somebody get mad at Hello? us. Is there anyone alive out there? Yeah. Is there anyone out there? Sorry, thank um, you for listening. No, it's fine. I wish I had some echo to put on that. Um, link, link letter. <laughs> Let's go with that. Link letter. Link letter. Link said. Link letter said he wanted to um, have this experience of where you discover two people who had complete anonymity and try to find out who they really were. It took nine months to cast it. They really took their fucking time. That's yeah. I think what did I what did I read or I I know I watched like some YouTube video. Or I, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I did some I research. did some yeah. research. Good for you. Uh, no, I love that. No, but Jennifer Aniston. I heard that too. For this. I heard that. I was this like, sometimes she comes. She you know because she also auditioned for SNL. I'm like she's she kind of she could have fallen she into got, any she number got of directions. Around. Yeah, yeah. So she really could have gone a lot of different directions. In here. another world. Yeah, because they weren't sure exactly who like i think the original characters were were so vaguely constructed it wasn't clear you know if one was going to be american like it, i don't it, think if they were both going to be american that would have been so it's so good that it's it's, it's good Julie that it's Delphi. not it's, it's, i know it's, it's good that it's someone it's also even it though, feels a little more like it, it would be distracting like it'd it be like oh okay this is I, I'm accepting some convenience in this story no, for the I, sake of like wanting to feel romance and like joy i'm with you but, if it was two americans i'd be like ugh. And also Ethan Hawke has that specific kind of like energy. And I I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine Jennifer Aniston not being like that sort of Rachel or like very kind of like, I don't don't like that that sort of, get my fortune read. Mm." Do you know what they're fighting about? (laughs) Yeah. You don't know what they said. Uh, I uh, read uh, uh, somewhere that, uh, 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 you know, you stop hearing people uh, as you get old. You know, women can't hear the uh, like lower register of men. Yeah, yeah. Does that sound familiar to you? No, no, no. It's the opposite. We're literally not not hearing each other. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank I'll, you so much. I like that. That was fun. I think it was probably really annoying. I thought but was, I, th- I wanted to express that. I feel like she. You need. I, no, a, no. I think that was funny. A specific type um, of actress for this. Well, role. and also, even though they're in Vienna, 
if somehow it feels like we're more on her territory than his because she's European. She's yeah, she seems more accepting of the people who are approaching. Yeah. Which is I find all the more fascinating yeah. as well because like I I even at her age, because now I'm older than she was in that movie, I think. Mm-hmm. Um I would already be like, no thanks, I don't want my fortune read. Mm-hmm. Why are you coming up to me? Yeah. Be yeah, very right. like cagey. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just like, you know, yeah, again, like just refreshing to see like yeah. oh it's free spirit. But I, I hesitate to, you know, say that and then not call out like she's not a man of pixie dream girl. And I think it's good to acknowledge, though, that people borrowed from characters like this to to create what became a man of pixie I dream agree. girl. No, you know, she's, I she's, think she's like a root influence, but yeah. not literally. Oh, no, that. she's so much more richly drawn than that. Yeah. And also, I love it's like, oh, I'm going back to Paris, going back to school. It's like, oh, where are you going? She's like, Le Sorbonne. Yeah. And it's just, she just says it so quick, but I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. She's smart. Yeah. <laughs> she has so smart. She's, uh, yeah, she's like, she's. She, and she's not, and she doesn't have like, she doesn't wave it around. She just yeah. says it very matter of factly, but I'm like, mm, I just like sat up in my chair a little bit. Like, that's, that's all, like I feel like, that's oh. That's a really good school. <laughs> yeah. And who's to say that she's not intelligent and resourceful enough to like, Oh, not handle traveling on her own. Oh, and you know? he seems very eager to show that he's intelligent. Yeah. And then even admits later that he's like, everything that came out of my mouth sounded so stupid. Yeah. He clearly, you know, and that's yeah, the thing, right? Like, to impress her. men are definitely threatened by when a strong, intelligent voice comes out of a female's body. <laughs> right. He's like, whoa, you know, wait. And so I like that we're seeing him kind of contend with that in the moment a bit. He wants to be in control, but she's like, I mean, that's why my best supporting player nomination goes to the palm reader for Super telling great. him, telling her, oh, he's learning. Yeah. You know, and she really just like put that guy in his place and he didn't like it, but yeah. I liked seeing it. No, she went for it. And I also just, I thought it was funny, but also I really enjoyed just how much the palm reader very quickly had to say about her by just glancing at her hand. And it clearly is like just to serve for the story and Absolutely. it's supposed to just reveal more about julie delpy's character but i also just i found that kind of funny but like still really endearing i guess yeah i know what you're saying just just like you are you are this and that and you are so special and wonderful and intelligent and you're gonna you get everything you want in your life but don't be said i think she tells her not to be cynical or something right or not to be critical yeah yeah. She's definitely more the romantic. I mean, she's more open to the experiences. And what's funny is whenever there is this moment like that that happens, it, the scene will kind of end, but the beginning of the next scene will have him interrogating the previous experience right. and kind of ruining it, like kind of taking a shit on it, and you can tell it bothers Taking her. the piss out of it. Like, it's like we just kind of enjoyed something, but you have to... And then I like that she's like, yeah. Mr. Romantic wants to kiss on the top of the Ferris wheel, but now you're like too cynical to acknowledge anything yeah and it's, she definitely i just felt relieved that she was um contending with all of it and really right. i didn't feel she was um slighted you know yeah. she she held her own and and really ran circles around him i thought you know and not that it has to be about that i mean obviously like no, once, but it, once it, he it, starts showing vulnerability oh you know now yeah. i now i care i, I mean, think it's like, i don't want to guys don't understand that like yeah. why don't guys fucking get that when a dude is toxic and trying to act like nothing bothers them in that way you know women want to see you just be like i'm scared right <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah like, exactly exactly it's that vulnerability and like i think a lot of guys wouldn't get that far in that in like a lengthy sort of conversation or or oh no you know back and forth about he does about yeah. life and experiences and he is like clearly really impressed with her yeah like he's, and not in like a shitty condescending way by the end i was kind of like no i think it's there is something sweet there is a connection here it's not bogus yeah is he's not just like re- a horny dude like no and and i like the ambiguity although i think it's maybe not that ambiguous about like them in the park you know and then in the oh, morning right. and in the morning we see her and she has the dress on but the shirt's not on under the dress right yeah and i think it like, i think it's it's like yeah something they left it semi ambiguous but not totally not totally i yeah. mean I, I think yeah it, like you could kind of make an argument either way but you know there is at least some heavy petting oh something went down yeah, yeah for sure but i i don't know even the debate like that they're having they're having Did a com- they fuck? like no. but they're having a conversation about why it would be a bad idea why it might be a good idea like, yeah there's all that preamble and then it just cut and then it cuts and then away it just, 
Yeah, exactly. The next like, day. You decide. Oh, by the way, the Ferris wheel that they kissed on is a famous site in Vienna. Yeah. And it was built in 1897. It's called Weiner Riesenrad. Yeah. I hope I said that right. Um, and it also was in The Third Man, the Orson Welles movie. So just mentioning it. Yeah. Ferris wheel. No, you know why I think they definitely did bone is... <sighs> is <laughs> back to the importance i don't care about i'm You're sorry like, uh-huh, ferris wheel great back it, to the bone back, no i this is what the listeners this is what they showed up for this is this is why they Just this is why they all came notes. to the auditorium um it's it's because she said i i knew i wanted to sleep with you or i already decided i wanted to sleep with you when i start when i came when i sat next to you or something like that mm. like she she makes that joke yeah yeah and that's after she has says that I don't think we should sleep together. Yeah. She then that's says, true. I already, de- I knew, I decided I wanted to sleep with you when I went, came to sat ne- sit next to you or something to that effect. Yeah. And I think, yeah, they definitely like probably they, boned. Oh, no, they definitely did. I don't they think. Probably boned. They just, they left it kind of. Who shot first? I mean, you know, what's funny. I, Roger Ebert's review at some point, he mentioned like at the bottom of the review, like not in the text really, but he was just like, oh, this is rated R, but like only really because of a few words. Like, yeah, this is an ideal movie for teenagers. <laughs> like, he yeah. seemed to really think like this was a great and I could totally imagine if I had seen this when I was like 15, how I would want a Eurail pass. And, you know, I would just want this experience. So absolutely, badly, you know, absolutely. And there's a lot of movies that have this kind of compressed timeline of like everything happens in one night, wandering the city together. There's this Italian movie that's an adaptation of a Dostoevsky story, or maybe it's a tall story. I can't remember. Uh, but it's called like, uh, Inazi Bianchi, White Nights. And it's mm-hmm. basically like a similar plot in that it's like two people wandering this city all night together. And yeah. I don't know. I just th- there's an interesting tradition of that. And films that have a compressed timeline, I think, are always it's always a good call. Like you're taught that in screenwriting mm-hmm. like school to like, you know, if you can cram this thing, into like one day, all the better. You know, yeah. Um, so this movie is just like Pedro Almodovar. I mean, yeah. Women on the Verge. Except that's more like a two day, probably. Yeah, right? it's about it's, a couple days, it's but like it a is day very, and a half. It's very compacted. It's though. day and a half or so because at one point she's just exhausted, right? She's right. Like, you know, she's like, I haven't slept in, five days, in two days. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it it works well. Um, this movie premiered in 1995 at Sundance. In the New York Times, Janet Maslin said, um, "This is the Eurail Pass version of an affair to remember." Um, there's more than romantic love in the air. There's also the exhilaration of making contact with a kindred spirit of instant conversational intimacy between two strangers. Uh, Roger Ebert said before sunrise is so much more like is so much like real life, uh, like a documentary with an invisible camera that I found myself remembering real conversations I had experienced with more or less the same words. Did you feel that way? Like that they were saying things that you had thought of before or that you're like, oh, no, I, I feel that way, too. Oh, absolutely. There was a little bit of a graduate I mean, you know, vibe to this. Like Back to the boning scene. <laughs> no, just the, the her really, uh, I really liked you saying interrogating. So I'm using that word now, too. Yeah. Like her really interrogating that idea of like um, trying to protect her, her, um, her emotional well-being and yeah. this decision of whether or not to sleep with him mm. on this like first and possibly only date only time she may ever see him and then she's like well then i feel like i'm gonna i'll just be a story i'm gonna miss you and i'm just gonna be like you're I'm, like i'm gonna wonder where you are who you're with and it's like yeah i you know i'm sure there are people who would think that it's like I don't know if it's reductive or maybe it's like regressive, like what they, some of the stuff they talk about between like the two sexes, you know, and on mm-hmm. the, the feminine, feminine behavior, masculine behavior. But I mean, I feel like that is a really, that's a difficult thing to contend with yeah. that, you know, is still an issue now. I've definitely slept with people on first dates. Mm-hmm. And then when it didn't work out, wondered if that like, was a mistake and it's affected mm-hmm. myself it's like oh i gave up too much like right. oh it hurts my self-esteem now like yeah did my i did i not value myself or i don't know no <laughs> like, i no i you're you're right on the money and i think yeah. you're right i think there's this kind of like 
like I like I did like what she said about I'm worried that feminism was like invented by men that it was like you know free your body free your mind she's really put a lot of thought into it like I I understand her point of view because like I think I'm like no from my experiences and what I've seen and and women just carry more now there are certain (laughs) things that are just true about there are some truisms here or things that that I can yeah that I can that I, that she some of the, the the beliefs and assertions that she has yeah including interrogating yeah. this idea of like what if it's all like what if it's all a sham what if it's all propaganda what if brought, was, brought by big man right I mean and it's not that like we're you know of course we know that that's not that isn't not the case. anti-feminist okay no no <laughs> I mean but I but I like that she had the thought um there was a scene I had had this thought when he when um Jesse starts talking about the notion of reincarnation and how the population has increased there are may, way more people on the planet today than there were you know a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago and so he's like so if we're being reincarnated then like we're not going to get a whole soul. It's going to be like one to five or something. Like it'll be like a fraction of a soul. Like how does this reincarnation thing work? Like where do the new souls come from? And like, and I must admit, like I have actually had that thought before. Oh, absolutely. And it was like, no, that's super, that's a very relatable, like uh, spiritual conundrum. Yeah. And then it's so numbers based, but it's also a very logical question. (laughs) Truly. It's like, or maybe some of these souls are from, like maybe my soul is from like an extinct dinosaur or oh yeah or Other something spe- no you know what i forgot about the spe- maybe the you have crossover potential. yeah maybe you have a dodo soul or like just a a, a mosquito that went splat on yeah we got we haven't know? taken into account all the ants and the mm-hmm. mosquitoes and that's just if we i mean you know i'm really trying to bend the rules to her <laughs> or well this is just yeah fully assuming that like I mean, our were, souls can there were just can be between this, different species yeah this movie is full of like little that we have souls and little oh, moments like that yeah. that are that are sort of connect that it's like the clothesline is their interest in each other and then there's yeah. all these sort of like little funny interesting chats sometimes personal sometimes vulnerable sometimes not sometimes full of artifice but i mean i that scene in the fucking booth where they're listening to the record it's like the whole movie is encapsulated in that one scene it's really nice it's so good it's very very it's nice. so good and yeah i don't feel like it, it's everybody there's that I feel like what is it? I'm I'm basically reciting like a poster or a meme at this point. It's mm-hmm. like, or no, it's a quote. It's a quote from someone that, I, and I don't know who, but it's like the uh, you know stupid people talk about like themselves or the, each other. Like it's like yourself or each or other people, mm-hmm. and then like people with like talking about ideas or something. I, mm-hmm. I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the tear of like I do. Maybe yeah. cut all this. I don't know. No, no. It's I. I don't know the name for it specifically. But there's that like. But there's a notion of like having. There's there's conversations. Yeah, that um, aren't enriching or you know like I. Don't, most most conversations are not enriching. Yeah. Even with like friends and acquaintances it's always yeah. it always it's a lot of like shit talking or it happens I don't know. yeah i mean i don't we're talking about the state of state of the world but on a more sort mm-hmm. of like well i think not to like be like well we're just living in so much chaos like we get off the hook but i think it is tough i mean right now i think like it feels yeah very difficult to to be distracted or to not be distracted no by- 1995 was a precedent precedented time yeah 1995 was a precedented time yeah we are in unprecedented times. yeah it, it it just feels kind of um i don't know i think we have a lot more well i don't know it's so hard to say but it's just there's just times where i feel like it's 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 all the harder to want to engage in things that are like so removed from day-to-day problems like, yeah like i don't i think that's why i could not stay in academia like that notion of the ivory tower is, you know, a little silly, but at the same time, it's like, it's more of a cloister. It's like, people are content, and hey, if you're content, you're content, and you're not in my way, but I did not want to, like, live in this place where it's a tiny niche community, where we're all concerned about issues that nobody outside this place has any idea or concern about. So you do sketch comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just uh I know I could be talking about literally anything right No but now. I full no you're you're not wrong I I just wanted it to be a dick No it's funny I I it's just 
there's a, yeah, there's like a hip. I, I learned in grad school there's a hipster subculture to anything, including academia. Yeah. Like, and right. I mean, you know, shit. I've thought about this in terms of professions too, in terms mm-hmm. of just, yeah, like niche groups. There's clicks. always a click. There's, there's always, always going to be clicky bullshit. Like, there's if always I young, do my fallback hot, career of being a teacher. There's always a young hot <laughs> shot. There's always like the one who's charismatic and not that hot, but because they're just like charismatic and not ugly. Like, people are like, swooning oh my God, you're literally talking about my restaurant too <laughs> <laughs> people no it's like a, there's always a, like the people fulfill these different roles right mm-hmm. i'm always like the stay away from that girl she's crazy bitch asshole one like it's a, <laughs> i always fall into that one i unintentionally somehow always wind up being the pixie pixie stick girl putting it on her ham sandwich the basket case or whatever i'll see you yeah cool inevitably i'm gonna become that asshole who mm. just went to detention because she didn't want to be alone on a saturday and had nothing to do <laughs> that's one of the i saddest, had to make this about me that's one of the saddest things i think i've ever heard i can't believe i just i just like made this all about me again that's okay when what's the podcast for otherwise as you go um, in there you make it about you one little question i had which was um like i just felt like the and this is not a problem it's just my own stupid brain but like every time it felt like the night kept starting yeah and i'm like wait isn't it dawn isn't it almost sunrise yet i like, did you know it like, didn't really do feel wait like wait they now were, we're sitting down at a cafe wait right, they were at like another no. restaurant i'm like isn't right, this almost o- like they're like we need no, to enjoy just, everything tonight and i'm like isn't the night almost over <laughs> yeah like i, I honestly because i've i've gone I've gone on a couple dates, I would say, like maybe three, where it's been this almost like an all night affair type of deal. Mm-hmm. And Initially it's, ending in sex. But, yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know, that's what that. Because at that point, I'm just like. You've been out all night. I, I, I'm quickly excusing it as a, well, you know, it's also like, I want this too. Right. I think it's some of it too. It's I'm going like, to get mine. Some of it is a little bit of like a. A throwing a bone because it's like yeah that was a marathon for you i get it <laughs> a little a little bit of and that and i don't and i don't we like we hung out all night and i just don't dislike you right now so that might be a good sign right exactly yeah, yeah. exactly like, i mean like, that, and that's like a fundamental question in this right at yeah. the end about do people grow tired of each other or are more fond of each other over time and you know he's asserting one thing and she's asserting another and although i haven't seen the other installments I understand that that question is worth pondering as we like move forward, which we are going yes. to in the next two episodes. And I, I, I have not seen the other two films. Nor there are I. certain things that I don't know what's coming. Obviously, with like the the YouTube binging and other bullshit like I've criticism, s- I've seen some. I have. I've seen. I've photos, more or less been spoiled on it. I've seen photos of Ethan Hawke with like different hair. That's, yeah, that's all I've seen. Of I the mean, other suffice movies. it to say, they keep coming together. Time, I think of it as like it. It evokes the ending to this sort of evokes like an eternal sunshine type of like ambiguity. But like w- once you know that there's other, I guess not. That's not the best comparison. Eternal sunshine, the end of the movie. You know, the last time they speak, she's like, "We're just gonna do you know same thing over and over again." And I'm gonna do this. You're gonna do that because that's, that's who we that's are. That's what I do. That's what you do. And he's just like, okay. okay. But then we see them repeatedly running through the snow and that's deliberately to indicate that they are in the cycle yeah. where they're going to, this is just, this is what they do now. Yeah. Like they're going to continue to erase each other and fall back in love and erase each other and fall back in love because that's their, it's their so nature. Weird. It's like, it's, 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 it's kind of in a way, I feel like you can look at it you can look at it and laugh a little bit you can look at it and it's a little pessimistic in a sense that you're stuck in the same like Mm -hmm. hamster wheel but you can also find like there's some it's ultimately a comedy i think it is it is but it's there's something sisyphusian about that absolutely it's a very it's a pretty melancholy song they play in the credits right after that too actually is that that beck song yeah yeah change your heart yeah look around one of the saddest songs ever yeah um meanwhile this has that ambiguous like it does it does feeling of i really yeah yeah, they're gonna keep coming together my my sorry i guess what i meant to say in regards to before sunrise is just my feeling just from this one and from what i've gotten about the other film so far is that i get the sense that regardless of however you think they they leave things at the end of these respective movies they keep coming together again and again because that's what the universe is expecting that's that's the universe they're in at least 
mm. would that would that our, that ours was so fanciful. No, that's that's true though because they they he does introduce part of his pitch <laughs> to convince her to get off the train. Right, is this notion of like think about this as time travel. Yeah. Like imagine yourself married in the future and you know you're wondering about all those guys and here's your opportunity to like find out yeah. what it would have been like, you know. And it's sort of a weird circular logic, but I I kind of liked the complexity of the pitch, you know, like Yeah. Um it would have convinced me for sure. Well, that's just it, right? And not like, just because he's cute. And I mean, like I'm not calling that a pickup line, but if it is, it's one very intelligent pickup line. Like, yeah. And not not like annoying until I mean like he like, definitely stepped it up like he, he was not it, intimidated after her saying yeah. that she she was studying at La Sorbonne you know yeah, he like, stepped it up and also what I liked about that too is that he um and he, he knew he, what it was too yeah <laughs> he centered it on yeah. her he yeah. made it about her experience her night he that's how he sold it not like he did a good job it wasn't yeah it wasn't about his needs it was about like. Aren't you, you're going to be left wondering like the, yeah it's an it's, experience it's, it's an experience right don't you want to experience life you seem like someone who values yeah. life and she's and just romantic like, enough to kind of be like okay and he also was like hey i might turn out to be a creep you could hop on the next train and go yeah. there is a kind of like she's not trapped you yeah. know like if she gets off the train it's not like oh no i'm now in a car with this this person. is also how i sell food at my serving job and people are like i don't know should i get that sausage pizza and i'm like well if you've been thinking about it this much you might as well let yourself enjoy it hey if you don't like it we'll take it back Uh oh sorry but Shetty. it's true i do tell people that <laughs> stay mad yeah notice how they usually don't send it back because i sold it yeah my god abc oh, always be always be closing yeah with Chibata. always be chatting always be chatting. always be chatting um you want to hear a little just a little bit about oh my gosh richard stewart link litter i love it all right link li who are you calling a link litter you, you cootie call queen a little link litter uh he was born july 30th 1960 he's got a birthday coming up mm. houston texas he's a leo yeah there you go thank you for that that says a lot that he, says a lot. He's, his he, hair is he, important. He would be a Leo. You think so? I've liked Leos before. Smart Leos. Smart Leos. I'm, now I'm projecting that on the Ethan Hawke character. I'm like, oh, that guy was definitely a he Leo. He seems like a Leo, yeah. It's that, yeah. It's that hair. Uh, in case you weren't aware, he's an American film director, producer, and screenwriter, known for films that revolve around suburban culture and the passage of time. Uh, we mentioned that he had made Slacker in 1990. That was his first film. Uh, followed by Dazed and Confused in 1993, which was kind of a hit and critically loved. Mm -hmm. It also did really good in VHS sales. That makes a lot of sense, though, because it is a good... It is a really good just like having that on on the TV. Mm -hmm. Like it makes sense that they would play it's that a lot. It's a party on. movie. Was it TNT or TBS that would play Probably it a lot? Probably both. <laughs> yeah, you know the movie, those movie channels. Remember anything Turner? Would, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like Comedy Central occasionally would get it. Yeah. It's also the film that introduced Matthew McConaughey to the world. So yeah. there's that. Um, there you go. I know it's the oldest he's ever looked in a movie too. I feel I like know, right? I feel like he's always looked younger. So gross. Since then, so gross. Um, I. Yeah, I really don't care for Dazed and Confused. Um, the whole paddling thing is just like I I hate it. I oh mean, yeah, the the, the it, it was so upsetting yeah. to me as a kid. Even though yeah. I would never have been in that situation. Apparently, like, that was just a lot allowed. To, <laughs> now, yeah, nowadays well, that, that movie was based on Linklater's uh, experiences going to Huntsville High School in Huntsville, Texas. And I don't oh. know that that was like the normal thing. But man, Texas is. There's some, there's some, uh, there's some weird hazing. I mean, you can definitely cut, cut this out, but I do <laughs> think that this sort of, that, that like, it's fucked up that this hazing, it's like, oh no, well, no, we're, we've gotten rid of the hazing, but now there's, now we have shootings. So it's like, oh, oh yeah. No. I'm like, I was just about to say like, oh, thank God we don't, we don't do any of that paddling, hazing, like fucked up bullying oh, that we used to. We, still we just do. have a record number of shootings yeah, we also uh, do, daily. We also like ruin people's lives like through the internet. Oh yeah. The internet. Cyberbullying. Um, psych uh, psychological I, warfare. I, I for one am very relieved I got out of high school before like smartphones. 
Like, yeah, I'm actually like a little pissed that I couldn't have like finished high school maybe 10 years earlier before MySpace or yeah. any of that. I would say actually only you really I would have only needed maybe five years. Five years. But but I'm also maybe factoring in like live journal and some of the other shit. I too. did live journal in MySpace toward the tail end of my high school experience. I would have loved to have not ever I know had to deal with that environment because that conflation was like also oh, kind of awful, gross. Awful, awful. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was just coming about. It's also a like, major distraction for me too. Oh Fuck, God! Totally. No, it, the undiagnosed the, ADHD plus like, you know, this yeah. brand new social platform that everybody's on oh, from yeah. school. Like, and then I was doing like live journal and Zanga and stuff like that. Oh, and, and all like, the journaling and shit yeah. too. Oh my god, and all the and, like, fandoms. Oh my god. It was really more just about like deciding on what theme I wanted a web page to look like. That I said right. I cared more about how it looked than what I was writing. Yeah, I was always tinkering with HTML and I was yeah. like, what am I doing? I have like 20 friends maybe. It was pretty much the reason though I got a digital camera because I was like, I want to have pictures on my blog. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. This that to turn, turned a lot of people into amateur photographers. Really My did. sister yeah. uh, wanted to be a photographer for a minute. Yeah, I I still think it's it's an incredible skill. It's so technical. Oh, for sure. It's so technical. Like that. I think that's just My it. sister like, could have been great. I mean, I'm like, I know life is uh, well. It might not be long for me. Who knows? But I mean, I have. I I. It's gonna be long. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying. Not like, let's pretend like I have you know 30 years. I could definitely like become a great technically skilled photographer in that time but for some reason in my head i'm like no um you know that's for that's for someone else you, you should have thought of that sooner i feel that like, way too you know like absolutely i feel that way about um <laughs> like piano and musical instruments oh, like, like it's it, and i know like it's, oh i might, i missed the window where i could have i could have picked up on those skills yeah and i know it's not too late because pe that's always what you hear from older people it's like it's never too late like it's never too late but there is a certain plasticity of the brain right. that goes away. And that includes for like language acquisition and this movie, like to tie it back. I mean, his whole experience of like, oh, you know, I'm American and no, I don't speak this language. And there's this he feels very dumb. He feels and and while you can sure, hey, people in Europe make fun of us all you yeah. want about how we don't speak a second language. We've earned that. Like we could, we should always speak in Spanish, but we don't. Yeah, I, I fucking like the way this this country, this government, like. Oh yeah, it doesn't want actually that. preparing people for real life skills. It's, no, that's, sorry, capitalism. It doesn't it doesn't serve for capitalism in America. Worked. They don't yeah. want us to be. Yeah. They don't want us to find other countries accessible. Exactly. For yeah. Our don't life leave. And don't ever leave. No. Um. Just go vacation there with your with your money. I mean, the other thing though is, um, there is that aspect of it, but um you know there's also our i'm so cynical no Holy it's fine fuck. i was also just thinking Sorry. about how our country is our country is so big like you know if you could take one hour train yeah. ride and you're suddenly in a place where they speak a different language yeah you're probably going to interact with people more often and people who want to practice their german or practice right. their italian or oh i'm french he's german but we both speak you know polish so that's how we communicate you know mm -hmm. like there, there's all this opportunity to exchange that we don't get you know or that you know someone like me living in like ohio i mean there are some it's not as if you're never exposed to another language we had plenty of people who spoke spanish and we had a lot of different immigrant communities mm -hmm. but in no way is that a thing that's like you know shared or encouraged if anything mm -hmm. it's like you guys need to take esl and learn our language and it just it's we don't have an official language mm -hmm. america has no official language people mm -hmm. think that english is it but no there's none so like shut the fuck up <laughs> like God. if you want to go cynical a lot of, yeah no but i mean you're not wrong it's like... annoying and and so i i'm i feel yeah somewhat just dis deserved right by like our educational system but also just by the accident of geography, you know? And Linklater, to get back to him, I mean, it's so interesting to see like this this Texan in Europe, you mm -hmm. know? It's almost like a, the reverse of the Paris, Texas thing, where it was this German ah, guy in America. I see what you did there. You like that? Yeah. Um, I thought it was fun. But uh, anyway, he, a few more things about Linklater. Um, he, for a time, attended Sam Houston State University, but he dropped out to work on an offshore, to offshore oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. During that time, he earned a fair amount of money because they pay well. 
Uh, he also read a lot of novels. And then when he came back on shore, he was in Houston. He spent a lot of time seeing movies at a repertory theater, and he decided he wanted to be a filmmaker. So mm-hmm. he used some of his savings, well, a lot of his savings, to buy a Super 8 camera, a projector, editing equipment, and then he moved to Austin, Texas, and decided, I'm going to start making films. Uh, he founds the Austin Film Society in 1985 with several other important film people. I just I didn't write their names down. I'm sorry. Um, he begins doing a lot of experimental filmmaking. He starts his own production company. Again, he makes Slacker. He goes on to make Dazed and Confused, which gets like commercially successful and critical acclaim. Um, he is like one of those great fucking people who has managed to like, he lives in Austin and he refuses to live or work in Hollywood for any extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he doesn't have to. He's like, nope, I figured I, I'm good. And I... I kind of love that. Um, also, another fact, he's been a vegetarian since his 20s. Good for him. So, you know, he'll probably outlive us all. <laughs> Good for him. Um, just a few other movies. We will talk more about mm-hmm. Linkletter because we're going to be talking about two other films. So I didn't want to... There'll be more. I don't want to bust your load. So this is just up to Before Sunrise. Just up to there. Mm-hmm. Just before Before just, Sunrise. It's just the tip. Just before Before Sunrise. But a few movies uh, that he's done... Uh, in no particular order. School of Rock, which I forgot about. So commercial and, you know, whatever. Uh, School of Rock, Bernie, Boyhood, which we mentioned. And um, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? You familiar with that one? Oh, yeah. No, I haven't watched it, but I know uh, what Kate Blanchett and uh, Kristen Wiig. It's like vaguely about Anna Wintour. Mm. Like, or it's sort of based on her, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I, yeah, I, I, about I, that. I wouldn't know. Anyway, I, I, <laughs> link letter or link later. I remember, vaguely remember the trailer. I'm going to get to the bottom of this uh, link letter. Link, link later. 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 Queen. Later. I will figure it out link later. Later. Um, so I mentioned who my best supporting player nom was. What What is yours? Is it also the palm reader? Um, yeah, tie for the tie for the couple at the beginning. But oh, the, the, the arguing, arguing German couple? couple. Excellent. Okay, I'm really gonna... good. I would say more so the the wife than the husband, just because she's with well, the way she slaps that newspaper <laughs> and then storms to the back. And I did go on Reddit, or I did look it up, and it's it was posted on Reddit yeah. like a translation of what they're arguing. Oh, about. really? They're basically just like sick of each other. Oh God! You know. She's just like she's just complaining about his bullshit, and she's com- and he's complaining about hers. And I cannot, I don't remember the specifics of it. It's very just like it's very like I'm bored. Very typical of you. You're annoying. You're you know. It's just this sort of like yeah. this very like sort of reminds me of like a, I don't know like a no exit or like no a little bit of um a waiting for Godot. Like I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah when are you gonna go yeah who cares i i hate you i'm going to the di- the dining car no wait for me yeah right like they're fighting but they stay together to fight like exactly it's like oh god this is some horrible like fighting fish pair <laughs> yeah like, like they're just their this is their symbiosis this is their thing something. that they do you know footnote i if i'm not mistaken that actor the man in that half of that couple Mm-hmm. owned the one of the cafes that appears later and that they used like basically that place where the palm reader comes and talks to them i guess that cafe was owned by the dude who was in this scene so they must have right like been i don't Very know what, collaborative yeah i don't know exactly I do like that i mean it's funny because i don't know what the order of operations is because they shot this thing almost chronologically so i'm like did they meet him and then he's like oh i could give you a location or something yeah you know? like i don't know but there's all kinds of little trivia out there about this movie. Some interesting, some not. Sometimes people put like continuity errors in trivia. Like his hand is on a salt shaker, and but when they cut, it's he's crossing his arm. Like who cares? I don't care. I used to literally have to look out for continuity, and I can tell you, editors pick the best take that for performance. We well, like, got a better quality film because of, because of that. Yeah, like, that was a choice. Right, let's take the shitty performance because like, the salt shaker matches. Yeah, you know, like the, just saying, like it's like the plot holes and cinema. Sense. When they're really big and distracting, it's funny. But. Well, that's different. You know, big and distracting is big and distracting. But yeah. like, I don't know. I'm looking for certain minor things. Like, I will say, like I've watched it. Ma- continuity matters, of course, it, it matters to a degree. I will say it is distracting in Pleasantville when Reese Witherspoon's hair goes from very tight curls 
um, just before they're about to get sucked into the TV, they have to call Don Knotts to come oh, like, right. repair the remote because they... Don Knotts is kind of evil in that movie. Yeah, right? he's just he's kinda, sinister. He, they try to make it out like it's whimsical what he's doing. Like, I'm teaching you life lessons. He, he, he. And it's like, no, he's a like freak. <laughs> he's a TV fucking... Now. That guy was the devil. No, he actually was like a freak and he is like a dick to them about like them not cooperating with his like... I'm giving you this great life. You're messing with it. But That's right. my point being, Reese Witherspoon's hair, her curls fall out um, at some point in this scene. Mm-hmm. And it's like a back and forth between her and Don when he first comes into the, the house it to fix matter. the remote. And yeah, her hair goes from being like sort of this loose scruffy. And then she turns around and it's like all like very tightly. Like they, I, the, the makeup lady just went and recurled her hair really fast or something. Wow. Or, yeah. I, or I don't know. They just they they did a take of it with the tight hair and then they had lunch and then they came back. Yeah, right. Like, all right, let's turn it around. <laughs> now, um, that's a distracting inconsistency. When I learned to do continuity and script supervising, um, we took. You know, I took like a little course. It was literally somebody at, went to a woman's yeah. apartment <laughs> where she taught Whoa. us and I paid her money. Um, but it wasn't bad. Whatever. I could work from the skills. But, <laughs> um, but she showed us a scene from Baskets, actually, which I mean, I love that show. So right. I wasn't mad. But it, there was like a scene where they go to like the Easter buffet together and he's got a cigarette that's like bent. Mm. And and then it's like not bent. And then it's bent again. And it's like really egregious. But it's like it, it's the doesn't matter it's the performance like no you might notice but no it doesn't matter enough yeah like i don't know so it's like i mean yeah you can forgive these things if, if it's if it's yeah. i and i can let go of reese witherspoon's inconsistent yeah. hair because pleasantville is yeah i really like that movie okay yeah <laughs> also i mean like for a movie that this movie is <laughs> I mean, to do continuity for this, it's like it's the most important thing really for the actors Mm because it's like, okay, how many hours have I known you now? Like, you know, how intimate should we be? Um, I think that's part of why they shot it in chronological order because they really didn't want to, you know, it was it would be too like very challenging. So they would sometimes just go back to a location a second time Mm -hmm. if, if it meant keeping things in order. So. Um, I think that makes sense. It does for this movie. So good. It adds to the authenticity. I mean, it makes it. it really that's, that's how it becomes so watchable. Is the the attention paid to trying to make as authentic mm-hmm. of yeah. a, like to present as authentic of a connection? Yeah, that's what's what sells this because yeah. otherwise it is a little too fanciful how everything comes together for them, in my opinion. But it's their chemistry and mm-hmm. the naturalness of it. Yeah, and. Um, the end, how, how endeared like right yeah. away I, yeah. I certainly felt to to both of them yeah and and again his whole notion of time travel he when they're the coming to the end of the night you know he says something about how like we're returning to real time again yeah you know, time but there is something kind of like yeah i i mean i can understand why the director had this experience and felt the need to try to create it on film you know like there, there's something about like to that just being with somebody and talking all night and um i don't know it somehow like accelerates something like i think sometimes you know when people meet and they really click it's like they and you know you hear like well we talked all night it's like right yeah. you're probably in love like you know i mean it's like it for some people it just it's it, you know like right away because of things like this mm-hmm. um i don't know yeah i i'm i'm usually fairly cynical too uh Maybe not as much tonight, but uh, <laughs> but I I'm with you. I think I was like prepared to go in and be like, bah, yeah. Bah. and yeah. I'm like, no, I like this. This was good. No, it was this really was real it was, good. It was nice, it was thoughtful. Um, I, I yeah, I love. It was refreshing. Yeah, it, it was, was quite fresh. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Letterbox at Fresh Movie Pod. Uh, where can they follow Chelsea? I never give your handles. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chelsea the Pope or on TikTok at Chelsea underscore Pope. Hey, wait, but Victoria, where can people follow you at? Oh, no, no one should follow me. No, shut <laughs> up. No, you can find me at Criterion. You're going to have to embrace it someday. Oh, okay, go oh, ahead. Criterion sorry. OOC is Twitter. What am I on Instagram? Vic Rohar. <laughs> v I C. Oh, I'm doing this terribly. I like Vic Rohar. Vic Rohar. V-I-C-R-O-H-A-R. Yeah. It's the first... 
the initial few letters of each. both her first and last first and middle and middle and last yeah. name. All right, we always ask you for reviews, but um, you know, not th- we don't have to this week. That's okay. Yeah, we don't need it. Take a break. 